In this video, we're going to show you how to fill silicone molds to make candle bases. For this, we'll need mono wax equipment with melted mixture of paraffin and stearin, a ladle to pour this mixture into molds, um, a candle wick of smallest size as toothpicks, one big piece of cardboard and also one small piece for squeezing the wick. I'll show you later. Then you might find it more useful working with mm, a funnel and of course we'll need the molds themselves. Here you can see all basic molds used with a small equipment set. We'll begin with the 17 cm high molds. They are represented by two kinds, with six edges and with eight edges. Six edges bases are used more often and that's why there are two of them. Then uh, 10 cm molds with straight and beveled edges both. And then four types of 7 cm candles, 6 straight edges, uh, beveled edges and very beveled edges. The last ones help us to make more complex patterns. And then also with 8 edges, which are of course much more difficult to work with, but the elaborate design that we get as a result is worth it. Now, before we start filling the molds, we need to prepare the wick first. We need to soak it in a paraffin stearin mixture and then calculate how much length we need to work with. It shouldn't be less or more than we need. We're going to count in the following way. Take the length of the candle base and add 15 cm. We need the wig that long so that we can tie it to the hook while working with the candle base. So for 7 cm candles we need a wig of 22 cm. For 10 cm candles we need a 25 cm wig. And for 17 cm candles we need a 32 cm long wig. Now uh, multiply each length on the number of molds and after that measure the needed wicks. To do that we're going to use uh, the piece of cardboard I have told you about in the beginning and uh, pay attention that each of its sides has a, th a certain length 22, 25 and 32 centimeters respectively. We need uh, 4 wicks of 25 cm, 20 wicks of 22 cm and uh, 3 wicks of 32 cm. So, begin preparing the wicks. So, Right now I'm making 4 wicks of 25 cm. Now 20 wicks of 22 cm. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. Fix again. Don't cut them yet because it will be easier to dip and soak them all together.
And now we have to add three long wicks of 32 centimeters. Here you uh, calculate twice the length of the cardboard piece. Put the cardboard aside. And cut the end of the wick. Now we need to soak the wick in the paraffin stearin mixture. This is the same mixture that we pour into the molds to make candle bases. The temperature of the mixture has to be 90 degrees. Start putting the wick inside the tank, straightening it uh, in the process to avoid any tangles. You'll see that as soon as you put the wick in there, air bubbles will start appearing. And that means that the wick began to soak. Now we need to get it out. So take uh, a small cardboard piece, fold it in half, and then pull the wick inside it, leaving all excessive paraffin in the tank. Very easy and convenient. This ensures that there are no bumps on the wick and it is very thin and flexible. Squeeze it well, and now the wick is ready. Now we take a big cardboard piece again, and we're going to measure pieces of wick for cutting them. Begin with uh, 7 cm candles and uh, respectively 22 cm wicks. We need 20 of those. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. The last one. See that we don't place the wicks um, in a pile on one another once they are cut and instead we spread them on the cardboard. This makes uh, cutting them much easier. Take a knife and cut them first on one side and then on another side. So we have 20 small wicks ready. Put them aside for now. Now we keep working with the left piece of wick and now we're going to measure four wicks of 25 centimeters. Repeat the same actions. Cut them. Put them aside, try not to mix them with the small wicks. Mm -hmm. 
Now 32 cm wicks and pay attention that in this case the needed length is divided in half. So two cardboard sides make one wick. So cut on one side only where there are the tips. Now, before we put the wicks in the mold, we need to fix a toothpick on top. It holds the wick and prevents it from falling into the mold or moving aside. We're going to do this with the help of a needle, uh, because wooden toothpicks are soft. Make a hole in the tip of a wick about a one centimeter aside from the tip and put a toothpick inside that hole. Using the same needle, make another tip of the wick flat. This is needed for easier placement in the mold. And now we do this with every week. All wicks are ready. Each of them has a toothpick on one tip and another tip is flat. Now put each wick in a mold and use a needle again. Let's begin with the small 7 cm candles. Put the free flat wick tip in the needle's ear. This is why we made it flat beforehand. Put the needle in a hole at the bottom of the mold, get the wick out and pull it. The toothpick is going to keep the wick on top. See that it is placed exactly in the center. It shouldn't be moved aside. Put the mold on the table and repeat the same thing with the next mold. The hole in the bottom is very small and uh, occupied by the wick, so the paraffin won't get through when we fill the mold. Fix the toothpick in the center, put the mold on the table. When you place the molds on the table, don't forget to leave 3-4 cm spaces between them. This provides a steadier cooling of the paraffin inside and no deformations will appear.
Now let's insert the wicks in 10 cm molds. And the process is the same. The needle is long and reaches the bottom easily, despite the fact that the wicks are quite long. The wig has to be strained well inside the mold. The last wake for a 10 cm candle. Now, now 17 cm candles. The third and last 17 cm candle wick. Strain the wick well as a string inside the mold. And now let's get back to 17 cm candles and make another 15 wicks. Check everything in the end. The wicks could have changed their position when you put the molds on the table. See that all of them are exactly in the center, because this ensures even burning of the candle. Now. Let's begin filling the mold. You can use uh, a ladle and a funnel so as not to spill the paraffin. See that uh, nothing drips off while you are filling the mold. And one of the main rules is that you shouldn't uh, fill the mold fully. You should leave half a centimeter of empty space at the top. We are going to fill the molds in two steps and we'll need to top them up later during the second step of the process.
pour little by little. Don't forget to leave half a centimeter at the top. The temperature of the mixture should be 90 degrees. If it is less, the prep's quality will be worse. So check the temperature all the time. The 7 cm molds are the smallest ones, so it's a bit harder to fill them. Of course, bigger molds are easier to fill. Leave 5 to 10 millimeters empty at the top of each mold and if you overpour it, then remove some mixture. You can see that the mixture, um, the mixture in uh, small molds that we did first has already started to freeze and uh, became white. And also see that the wick is clasped by the mold, so no extra fixations are needed. Or the paraffin sterile mixture that ended up on the table can be easily removed later. So the first stage of filling is over. 
Now we leave the mold until complete freezing. Depending on the temperature in the room and uh, the size of the mold, uh, it can vary from one and a half to two hours to even three or four hours. And before you leave the molds to freeze, check again that each wick with the toothpick is placed exactly in the center and did move aside. Now let's wait. So we can see that the mixture is fully frozen and white. In case there are some holes in uh, paraffin at the top, we need to make them bigger with a needle or a knife to ensure that the next level of mixture will get inside them. I'm talking about the second step of uh, filling the mold when we're going to add up some mixture, which is going to be hot, and it has to go inside all those holes. If the molds look uh, quite whole and flat, still try to find bubbles and pierce them all, because there is almost no way that the bubbles didn't appear and the surface is absolutely flat. Somewhere they are big and don't need extra piercing, but somewhere the bubbles are really small and they have to be pierced using a needle or a knife. Don't forget to place the molds at 2-3 cm distance between each other. When they are too close to each other, these air bubbles are going to appear on the edges, which is really bad. So, all holes have been pierced, everything is fine, and now we need to pour the mixture again until the very top of the mold. You can use uh, a funnel to do that. This is going to be much more convenient using it. Here you need to be very careful, because the, the volume of the mold is quite small this time.
if you over pour somewhere that's fine because the table and the mold can be cleaned quite easily later on and the paraffin pieces can be melted again after that. Don't forget that the temperature should still be 90 degrees. This is the usual temperature for candle basis mixture. When you're pouring the second portion, you can see how all air bubbles go up and stay on the surface. In this way, we provide that the candle base becomes very stable and whole and good quality for the next work. Now we need to wait for another hour or even less until the preps cool off. Now everything is frozen and we can start getting the bases out of molds. The paraffin sterile mixture became white and frozen and the process of getting it out uh, is very easy. At this stage we are going to uh, use the toothpicks and that we left on the surface, they're going to be quite helpful. So just press on the molds at the sides and easily get the base out. Then remove the toothpick. Uh, we cut the wick tip so that it doesn't stay in your way when you carve the candle and when it burns. Press on the sides of the mold again and get the base out. Put the toothpick aside. By the way, toothpicks can be used again. Pay attention once again, the top part of the candle is where the wick is long. The short end of the wick is cut away. Once 
With beveled bases, finding the top part is easier because it is narrower. Some toothpicks break, that's not to worry about. It's better to place very beveled bases vertically on the table. The molds are quite oily and that's why the bases get out very easily. In the same way, we're going to deal with 10 cm molds now.
all preps are ready. The process was quite easy, as you might have noticed. Just follow all instructions and in this case the carving will go well too, because the base will be of very high quality.